we also have uh, a new all apps. So now we don't scroll vertically uh, through the list of applications. We scroll page by page through the applications. Uh, here again, we have three animations. Uh, it's all using the UI toolkit, so it used to be done in render script. Uh, now it's, it's using new APIs that we have on the view class uh, and the new view animation framework. And you can uh, quickly transition to your widget, so you don't go through a long press menu anymore. Uh, widgets are just kind of like uh, like applications. So if I want to drop a widget on my home screen, I just uh, don't press it, drop it here. Uh, we also improve folders. Uh, folders is a feature that we had since uh, Android 1.0. It was a little hard to they were a little hard to use. So now you can rename them in just one tap. Uh, it used to be a long press on some unknown part of the screen. Uh, you can reorganize the content of your folder. Uh, again, we have nice animations uh, thanks to the new framework. Uh, and if you want to create a folder, it's extremely simple. You just drop an icon on top of another one, and then you just copy the name. We also introduced a dock at the bottom. Uh, you can also create folders in the dock. There you go, you can put all the folders in the dock. Uh, so the home screen is just getting more flexible, a little more powerful, easier to use, uh, and we kept the UI simple. Uh, in the chat, I will show you the new notification system. So th there's a couple other elements that are maybe not obvious from just looking at the screen. One is uh, recent apps. Um, so we can pop up recent apps and see thumbnails. So these are screenshots taken of the applications while they're running, so you can easily um, visually see, oh yeah, yeah, that's the application I was in the view of. And again, that, that's a feature that, uh, that has always been in Android, but it used to be a long press on the home key. Uh, and here now we have a visual cue on screen. It's not a long press anymore, just one tap, you, 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 you see it on screen all the time. So this is something that our UX team has been hard at work on for ICS. They try to get rid of all the small presses and you know, hard to use uh, manipulations that we had, uh, and they make everything a lot simpler. Uh, there's also a new uh, usage paradigm, which I say because paradigm's a good word to use in a presentation. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm going for. Uh, of swiping uh, to get rid of items. So we see this both in the recent apps as well as the notifications that we'll get. So if we don't actually want to return to that application, we want to remove it from recent, so we can simply swipe it away and get rid of it. And this actually kills the application, so you don't have to go to the settings anymore, go to manage applications, find the application to first stuff. <laughs> And I know it makes me happy, I still don't understand why. <laughs> Yay, kill me applications. Yay. Uh, <laughs> notifications uh, live in a shade that you pull down from the top. So we see the, the system bar up at the top. Uh, so the, the system bar on phones got split as opposed to Honeycomb, where we had all the, the standard home and back buttons on the left, and then notifications and the other system information on the right. Now that information is split. So we've got the um, the what used to be the hard buttons down at the bottom, and then we have the notification information, the other status information up at the top. So we can pull down the shade here, nice little animation there. We can see the notifications that are waiting for us. Again, we have this uh, swipe thing that we can you know, get rid of these things if we no longer want to see them anymore, or we can close them all by simply tapping the X button. Um, there's an, in, there's a, an interesting UI thing there where it actually swiped the things out to the, to the right which is sort of a way of teaching you how to use the device at the same time as you're using it. So nothing is, you know, the mystery of, oh, well, if I long press on this area of the screen, then I can change the public so. uh, But we also have the more advanced notifications from Honeycomb. So if I start playing music, for instance, uh, let's see, so that's a new music player. And you can see one of those persistent notifications up there. So there's a new music uh, notification. Uh, and you can have controls in the notification. So here you can go to the next song or you can stop playing, or you can dismiss the notification altogether. Uh, this is an API open to every application. Uh, the music application that I just showed you is what we call Unbundled, so it uses the only APIs from the SDK, so anything it does, you can also do. Uh, and also, when you play music, I don't know if you're gonna demo this later, but you can actually have the music controls available on the lock screen. So yeah. both the, the camera as well as the music controls are, are things that maybe you wanna use, you know, without going through the whole UI of getting into your phone, you just want access to your music from this device that you're carrying around in your pocket. Uh, uh, so much and, easier to get to. And of course, this only works if you don't have uh, No, it works if you have a, 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 a pin or a pad. Yeah, so, yeah, it works all the time. That's pretty cool. What does work only if you don't have uh, a pin code or a pattern to secure with your lock screen. You can access your notifications from the lock screen, so you don't have to unlock your phone anymore. Uh, of course, we do that only if you don't have a secure lock screen, uh, because Obviously, you can access you know, important information like your emails and your IMs. And let's dismiss that. 
Uh, now, let's look at some of the applications. Uh, I'm going to start with the web browser. So the web browser is actually really, really nice to use on SES. And uh, I'll start with one of my favorite features in the web browser. So there are many websites I go to uh, with my phone, and I hate it when they show me the stupid mobile version of the website. I have a really powerful phone. I have a big screen. I don't want to see the mobile version of the website. Uh, so now we have a feature in the menu here where you can request the desktop version of the website. Uh, so you don't have to find the way at the bottom. You don't have to uh, do tricky things with the, uh, with the user agent of the browser. And hopefully the Wi-Fi will work. There you go. Um, so this is the New York Times. This is the full browser experience. And as you can see, um, your eyes are way better than mine. OK, so it actually looks good on the device. This is a rescale on the screen. Uh, this is all hardware accelerated, so if I scroll, it's uh, very smooth. Uh, we use a stem of tiles. Uh, if you have used an Android tablet, uh, you, you will be familiar with the way it works. Uh, but it feels a lot nicer. Um, we have a better tab UI, so you can see up to 16 tabs. Um, and same thing here, if you want to dismiss a tab, you can just swipe it to the right. Uh, again, you have access to your bookmarks. So I mentioned that before, but you can synchronize your bookmarks. Uh, with, your, with Chrome, so if you use Chrome on your desktop and you enable uh, bookmark synchronization, you will get all your bookmarks on your phone. Extremely useful. So the calendar got some enhancements to make it much easier to use. Um, so it's very quick to switch between these different views. So we're looking at the week view. Let's go into the day view and see what's going on today. So we had an AV set. We have this keynote. Name. We should really try to make that. I'll take a look at the event there. Um, if you have a lot of events, sometimes it's really hard to actually read your calendar, and then you have to go into the individual events. We have a pinch zoom feature in calendar now that makes it much easier to see what's actually going on with your day. And you can also swipe very easily between the days of your week or the weeks of your month. So it's much easier and, and more quick to access the information that you need in the calendar. So the swipe is also becoming a universal gesture on Android. You've seen on the launcher, you swipe between your workspaces when you open the list of all applications. You swipe between the pages. In the calendar, you swipe between the days. Uh, and you will see that in Gmail, you swipe between emails. Uh, we, we try to use that, 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 that gesture everywhere. And we have a new API for that called the view pager that's available as a separate library that you can use in your applications today. You don't have to run on SES for that. Uh, that, you, that lets you build that kind of UI in, in your application. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my favorite apps, the camera application. Um, so the Galaxy Nexus is a really nice device that makes really good photos. Uh, one of the cool features is what we call the zero shutter lag. So we can take pictures really quickly. Well, of course, with the flash, it's a little bit slower, but you can see every time I'm taking a picture, like just the flash. Okay. Uh, yeah, part. But anyway. <coughs> uh, we also have a new zoom feature. Uh, so it's directly on screen. You can zoom in and out. And you can see we detect faces to do uh, focus. Uh, it actually works really well with an audience. That's nice. <laughs> I usually use a picture of uh, me and my wife on my desk. To show it. Um, we also have different modes. So we have a panorama mode. Let's see if it works. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it won't rotate on the, on the project. <laughs> Uh, but you just, you just well, press everybody, please go like this. <laughs> you just press the button and, and then you, you, you uh, slowly swipe across the scene. Stay very still. It's hard. Almost. Uh, I'm running out of room. There we go. And boom, I have a panorama. So now it's creating a, a, a higher resolution version of the panorama. And that's all you have to do. Then it's in your gallery. You can you know, mail it, share it, uh, tweet it, Facebook it, Google Plus it, whatever you guys do these days. <laughs> uh, we have a really nice video camera. So that particular device can do uh, 1080p. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, it's like, turn, turn the head again. Uh, while you're recording a video, you can just tap the screen to take a photo. Uh, so if there's a particular frame you're interested in, you know, there's some action going on, you can capture a photo during the video. It's, it's really nice. Uh, and we have a, a bunch of visual effects that you can apply to the videos. Uh, let's see, where are they? There we go. Uh, so some of them are rather silly. For instance, let's give chat these guys. There you go. You look so much better this way. 
so there's a bunch of you know uh, of fun uh, and again sorry for the, for the UI, but uh, there's a bunch of fun effects. So you can squeeze, you can create a big mouth, small mouth, big nose. I don't need that one. Uh, small eyes. You can also replace the background, so you can uh, replace the background with any picture you want, or also a video. And we have a, a few, uh, we have three pre-built scenes so you can in space. Uh, uh, you can have a nice sunset or a disco ball. And uh, what's interesting uh, is that those effects are also available when you do video chat using Google Talk. Uh, we're not going to demo that, but you can also use them. There. It's also interesting to note that these are not just features of this particular camera. Some of the features are enabled by this particular camera, but it's capabilities of the system that are also exposed to applications that run. So if the camera has capabilities for doing zero shutter lag or whatever, um, then the applications can take advantage of that for particular effects. That they we also have, have a really cool new feature. You can select the part of the scene where you want to keep the focus. So it's really nice when you're doing uh, close-ups. Uh, and we're going to take a picture of that dirty keyboard. That's what I have that right? Uh, see, what, and then when you take a picture, you can uh, jump directly to the gallery. Um, and from there, we have a new edit menu where you can apply visual effects to your picture. So you can... Uh, de -dandruff. You can. We don't have that one. <laughs> so you can make the shadows, you know, shadow wear. Uh, you can change the brightness. You have a, a smart auto fix. Uh, you can apply like fancy hipster effect, like this one, uh, change the saturation. You know, it's very similar to what you can find in a, in a lot of uh, photo applications these days. You can also uh, make faces blue, I don't know why, but you can. Uh, rotate the picture, sharpen it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice tool, it's very easy. Uh, you also have an undo redo system, so anything you apply is non destructive until you save the picture. Uh, it's a nice way when you take a photo to just make it better, like just before you send it by email to you. Uh, a friend or, or, or your family. Actually, photos got easier to interact with uh, as well. I, I found uh, once I started using Google Plus, it has a way of syncing the photos automatically so you don't ever have to sort of manually share these things that just magically appear in your account later. Uh, which uh, makes it a little easier to manage. You also have access to that feature from the gallery. So if you op open a photo from your gallery, you can uh, go edit that photo right here. Uh, and the edited version will be saved alongside the original photo so you don't lose your, orig your original work. Uh, the gallery also has an integration with Google Plus. So, for instance, here I'm logging uh, to my Google Plus account, and you can see all, all the photos I've, I've put on Google Plus. Uh, and you can see there's a little Picasso icon in the bottom corner of every album that shows that it's coming from the web. Uh, so, if you want to qu quickly change your wallpaper, you can just grab it from your Picasso account instead of you know, plugging your phone to your computer, or copying the photo on the phone, and so on. Uh, a lot easier. Uh, we also have different views uh, for, for your albums. You can uh, sort your photos by location, by time. You can, uh, especially on the web, like with Picasa, you can put, uh, uh, you can, uh, put tags on faces uh, and we'll sort the, all the pictures by the different people you have. Gmail got uh, various little improvements here. Um, so there's, again, the swiping feature that we can see. Uh, so we can click on a message, but then if we didn't want to go back to the header box and then uh, back into the message content, we can simply swipe between the different messages in the account. Uh, and you can see the action bar at work here, so you can switch between your accounts. And then the split action bar, one of the changes in ICS, so now we have the actual navigation elements up at the top, so I can switch between the accounts there or go back to the head. Um, and then we've got the actual actions we can perform as well as the overflow menu on the right here. Uh, if there's anything else about uh, yeah. So, uh, one of the interesting features of uh, ICS as well is the new dictation system. Uh, so, when you want to compose an email, uh, we already had speech to text, but it was pretty slow because you had to speech uh, an entire sentence and you had to wait for the sentence to be sent to the server and the result back. So now we're trying to do that in real time. So hopefully if the Wi-Fi network is fast enough, uh, it will work. It also works with the French accent. That's awesome. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Sort of works with the French accent. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work with your American. Yeah. <laughs> it was written by French engineers. <laughs> uh, 
And then, uh, you know, stop laughing, you make the table bonkers. Uh, and then you can correct uh, the, 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 the dictation. Uh, so you can click the words and, you know, it, it has different ways of interpreting what you said. Uh, so you can quickly fix uh, the, 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 the text that was uh, written for you. Uh, we also have now a spell checker. There we go. So when there's a red underline on a word, you can just tap on it, and then you can uh, automatically correct it from there, or you can add it to the dictionary. Adding words to the dictionary used to be a lot harder, um, and we made that better. Uh, and the keyboard overall is a lot nicer. You know, it, it responds faster to, to your touch. Uh, it, it's, it's nicer to, to use, especially on a device with such a big screen. Uh, and Gmail also improved a little bit the uh, the way the threaded use the threaded conversation work, and of course you don't have any of those. Uh, but it's more similar to what you see in the, the Gmail web UI. Gmail, uh, Google Maps, Google Maps uh, has not changed much, but uh, it looks awesome on this device. Uh, I don't know if many of you use it uh, or know about this feature, but you can still do you know, the zoom, you have the vector maps, you can still to get the 3D buildings. Uh, again, it doesn't look really great on that, on that screen because of the, of the resizing. Um, and one of the new, the new labs feature is, let's see if I can enable it. So if you go to settings, you go to labs, you can enable pre-cache map area, and then all you do is go back to the map, long press anywhere on the map you want to cache, you click on it, and then here you can call, click pre-cache. Uh, that will cache uh, the server 10 miles around the point where you long pressed, uh, and that will be available offline. Uh, so for instance, Jed and I did that yesterday because we're going to Europe next week for another conference. We're not going to have data service there, so we pre the whole city so we can find our way back to our hotel. Unfortunately, Europe is actually larger than 10 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 12 miles. <laughs> we also have the new market UI. Um, you may be familiar with it. Uh, once again, it shows this new swipe gesture. Uh, so when you want to sw swipe between the different views, if the network works, okay, that's what it is. <coughs> Uh, so you can swipe between the different categories, so if you want to navigate between the top three applications, the top paid applications, the top staff, the top peaks, the top whatnot, uh, you just swipe, and the network is not covering. And there's more, more media capabilities, so markets sort of morphed in the last year to offer more than simply applications, so you've also got access to books that you can then use, read in the Google Books application, or uh, movies that you can watch, you can rent. Market, so it's sort of an all-encompassing uh, market for all the stuff, all the content that you might want to have on your device. Uh, and just to make you jealous, like watching 720p movies uh, from market on the device is really awesome. It's really good. So what's the name of that? Uh, oh, sorry, it's the Galaxy Nexus. Okay. Yeah, you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I have several. <laughs> I think I'll have one here tonight. Yeah. I'll buy. You have to have two because then you can put your stereo glasses on and then watch 720 <laughs> people. I have devices. Uh, music, it's a very similar experience uh, to what you can get today. That's integration with Google Music, so you can stream your music from your, your Google account. Uh, that won't protect the web fancy 3D views when you're on the screen. Once again, we have the swipe uh, to switch between different views. So in any app, like when you see those tabs at the top, uh, you can start swiping to switch between the tabs. You don't have to go up there and scroll the tabs. You can also do that, but... I, I should point out, too, just in the middle of this, if you're confused why there's this white dot bouncing on the screen, you would not have that. That's something we enabled it's so you can tell where his fingers are on the screen, because otherwise it's really confusing when the UI changes. Well, it's a new feature. We <laughs> want you to know where your finger is. <laughs> I, could just, I could just see the tweets coming. <laughs> Uh, we have a much improved uh, context application. Uh, again, very clean UI, so this is the ICS theme. We have tabs, so we can swipe between the different views. Uh, here you can see all the contacts I have on uh, Google+. Plus. Um, this is very similar to what you had before, just looks nicer. We have the big pictures coming from Google+, Plus. we have high-risk pictures.